thank you. Uh, thanks so much for tuning into our presentation today. Uh, as Derek mentioned, Cody Clevin with High Vision. Actually, I live in uh, Wisconsin, so not too far away. Uh, Bill Taylor's right here. We call him Handsome Bill Taylor. Reasons obvious. From uh, Atlanta, Georgia. He's going to talk about digital signage. Just a couple, uh, a couple slides on, on High Vision, right? Just so you, you know who we are. Um, obviously, we we manufacture video streaming technologies. We manufacture digital signage. Um, but more important, right? Our, our mantra: we help people work better with video, right? And we've chosen this mantra uh, specifically. Um, kind of the key word is, is helping people work better with video. And really, what we do is we we you know take our customer base. We take the customers that our strategic partners like Century are working with. And we finally tune our solutions to help those customers work more efficiently and more effectively uh, with our video, right? We tailor make our, our products to fit within their existing workflows and how they do business. Our goal is to, to manufacture technologies where people don't have to learn a new technology. Generally speaking, we do one of three things. We help our partners or our partners and our customers do one of three things. We're helping them inform, inform their employees, and inform their customers, um, either with IPTV, with corporate communication solutions, which I'm going to talk about today, um, and of course with digital signage. We help them innovate, right? A lot of our customers um, are leveraging our technologies to, uh, to drive their usability labs, their focus groups, uh, provide training. And we're helping them engage their end customers, right? We're providing workflows and technologies for allowing them to communicate with their, with their inter, internet-based consumers and users. Right, so we're going to talk uh, mostly about corporate communications and, uh, and our, our technologies and considerations uh, to take into account when uh, trying to deliver video and media to your employees. And, uh, and, and one of the, the, hottest, the hottest trends we're seeing, the hottest demands we're seeing right now is, is leveraging video for, for all hands and town hall style meetings, right? And when we talk about this, when we talk about these town hall and all hands meetings, these aren't collaborative events, you know, these aren't uh, what the, the people at Econo were talking about earlier, right? This isn't video, video conferencing, it's not web conferencing, but really it's a, it's a one to many medium, right? A, a push technology. And the reasons that people are doing these are for obvious reasons, right? They're leveraging technology to, to break silos, you know, um, between departments or between facilities. They're uh, enhancing uh, their culture, right? Enhancing their brand, right? And they're boosting productivity. One of the key things when you're doing a live event, right? One of the most, absolutely most important things is not the quality of the video, Right? It's not what, what device your people are using to access it, but one of the most crucial, crucial things right, is making sure it's successful, making sure that it doesn't fail, making sure that the executive who may be giving the presentation doesn't end up with, you know, with, with egg on, on his or her face. So at the end of the day, the, the challenges really are to maximize efficiency while minimizing risk. One of the key things, right, to, to maximize efficiency and, and make sure that uh, you're able to leverage technology is, is to be able to contribute content from anywhere, right? The last thing you necessarily want to do is make sure that, uh, you know, that, that the executive or the presentation can be delivered from anywhere. You don't want to restrict your presenter from being within a specific room or a specific building or a specific part of the network. Right, obviously, uh, most organizations are, have multiple facilities, they're in multiple states, some are in multiple countries, and executives and presenters are traveling all the time. Right, and um, of course, you know, bring your own device, uh, that sort of uh, approach right, has been around for, for quite a few years now. You know, selecting a platform, selecting a technology that allows your, your uh, consumers of content to be able to access from any device or any, any tablet, uh, computer, operating system, etc. Metadata and search is really important. It's not so important if you have one asset or two assets or if you're just doing a live event because then, of course, you just send out the URL and everybody clicks on the URL and, and they're good to go. When you have a lot of assets, you know, uh, providing metadata and search capability is really key to allowing the consumers of that content to quickly uh, find the assets, find the information they're looking for. And as I mentioned before, reliability, right, is paramount, right? You, you, can't, you can't have a technology, you can't have an infrastructure that's not guaranteed to work. From an IT standpoint, 
right? There's a lot of considerations and things to, to think about, right? Administrative control of media is very important. Whether you're protecting competitors or you're a healthcare organization, you're trying to protect your, your patient uh, data, you know, trying to maintain HIPAA compliance, or whether you're trying to protect one department, right? You're trying to segregate your content based on your intended audience. Controlling that content um, is, is very important. Here's a key one, right? Making sure that experience, you know, works across all of your all of your networks and all of uh, your, your very network topologies. Um, you know, throughout our sales cycles and our processes, uh, we're always having discussions with IT departments to figure out how to deliver content from point A to point B, C, D, and F and Z, right? When there's you know a single T1 connection from here to there, there's bonded T1s there, there's only internet connectivity there, right? So it's allowing all, you know, all people within your organization, no matter where they sit on the IT network, making sure they have access, right, without actually bringing down the network. Right, and doing so without compromising your other, your other products, right, that are leveraging the network. You know, email, web traffic, uh, video conference meetings, etc. You can't have all of your traffic going to your live events, your corporate communication content, because there's certainly other core business functions that need to leverage the, the network as well. And it's for all these reasons and more that, that you need a platform, right? You need a platform to manage these events, manage live events, manage your video on demand content. In terms of making it uh, you know, a successful deployment and making it easy to support moving forward, it's very key to have, have an ecosystem, right, from, from start to finish, where you know that the, the contribution engine is going to work with the management platform, that the management platform is going to distribute that to all of your users, again, on your different locations, and your different devices, and your different networks, and to make sure all those key components work together now, not only now, but in the future. Right? If, uh, if you upgrade your management platform, right, are the encoders that you have on the network going to necessarily work with that management platform? If you upgrade your encoders, are they going to work with the players right, or the mobile devices that you may have on the far end? So it's this end-to-end -end, right, strategy that's very, very important. You're undoubtedly, if you're doing this now, or you're looking to do this now, right, you're, you're undoubtedly going to have users on, uh, on a, on a you know, very uh, defined, specific network accessing these within a facility. You're going to have a, you're going to have an encoder or some sort of device, whether it's a computer, whether it's a hardware device, feeding a server. In our case, we've got the Makito encoders. You've, you've actually got one on the table there if you want to check it out. Feeding a, a server that's on the network, and then that server actually delivers that content to viewers who sit on the network. And we can leverage a variety of different paradigms, you know, delivery paradigms to reach those users. We can deliver it via unicast, multicast, simulated multicast, uh, over wireless access points, etc. You're also going to, of course, want to make sure that not only can you deliver to those users in the, the head office, right, that are on that private local area network, but you can also deliver that content to multiple facilities, right, people at those remote offices that they can watch that content live and on demand as well. One of the challenges with this model, right, is when it comes to network. You know, so it's, it's pretty good, right, if you want to deliver multicast video and you have multicast enabled throughout your wide area network, these links between the head office and those remote sites. If you have multicast enabled throughout your wide area network, right, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, it gets tricky when you don't, right? It gets trickier because it's fine if you, maybe if you have three, but what happens if you have 15 sites or 20 sites and you're delivering a unicast stream from your head office to all those remote sites, right? If you have 20 sites and you're delivering a two meg stream, you're using 40 megabits of outbound bandwidth, right, to actually reach those, those sites. And so you may need to consider, uh, what we've actually implemented, right, is a, is a cloud, is a hybrid type model, where instead of delivering, I'm going to zip back to my previous slide, instead of delivering a unique stream, a unicast stream from the head office to all those remote sites, you're actually delivering a single stream up to the cloud, and then leveraging the cloud to replicate that stream out to your remote facilities. So in the previous example, right, if I've got three offices and I have a four megabit stream, I'm using, I'm needing 12 megabits of outbound bandwidth to reach those remote sites. With this model, whether I have three sites or I have 50 sites or 500 sites, I only need the four megabits to get from the home office, or sorry, from the remote location up to the cloud and then the cloud 
is obviously more scalable and it can then actually replicate that stream out to the remote sites, right? So these are all things to consider when, uh, when you consider where your events are going to originate from and, and what your uh, network topology looks like. Um, and then of course your, your encoder is important as well and, and there's a million different encoders out in the marketplace right now. Um, most of them are very good. We actually have a, our Makito is kind of a small form factor, um, hardware based encoder. One of the cool things um, you may have noticed in my little diagrams earlier, I got these little SRT bubbles, right? SRT stands for Secure Reliable Transport. One of the cool things about, uh, about the Makito is it actually has this proprietary SRT uh, protocol, which is a, it's a, for you, for you encoding uh, geeks out there, right? It's an H.264 transport vehicle and what it does is it provides resiliency. Right, and of course, as we mentioned earlier, when you're providing, when you're doing these live events, you know, reliability, resiliency is very, very important. SRT actually provides packet recovery. So when you're going from site to site and there's packet loss, there's jitter, there's everything that affects the qual video quality, right? SRT is going to actually fix that. It's also going to encrypt that traffic, right? So if, uh, if security is, uh, is important, right, whether it's, it's confidential information or it's HIPAA sensitive data, um, SRT is going to encrypt that data for you. From a management standpoint, right, and this is, this is a key part of the solution, right, you want to make sure it's easy to use. Unless you're doing live events every day, which most organizations aren't, or maybe the large organizations are, but it's multiple, multiple departments, multiple people that are doing them, right, it's got to be, it's got to be easy for people to use. You don't want to every quarter, right, or every month when your CEO gets up there, you don't have to relearn how to use the system again, right, so the solution needs to be it needs to be easy to use, it needs to support different roles within your organization because undoubtedly you're going to have people in your organization who are maybe responsible for managing the front end, managing what the user experience looks like. You may have uh, media people who are responsible for actually executing the events. You may have IT people or somebody who's actually generating um, analytics and reports to figure out how much the system is being used. They're trying to figure out ROI, etc. And so having that role-based security right, to not give everybody keys to the kingdom is, is very important. Right, so authenticated experience, tying into your Active Directory or LDAP, nobody likes to manage uh, more than one password. Uh, very important, and this ties into that role-based security as well, leveraging your Active Directory, leveraging your LDAP, right, to assign role-based permissions to the system is very important. Creating a, a curated, you know, or specific uh, viewing experiences for different groups of employees is important, right? As, as you, most of our customers experience when they create a lot of content, right? They, they want to make sure that their employees are watching only the content that they're most likely to be interested in, right? It's kind of like when I go to, YouTube kind of does this to a certain extent. Like when I go to YouTube, I don't watch, I don't see videos pop up for Barbie dolls. I see videos that pop up that are most relevant to the last thing I watched. Right, and so you want some of that to be dynamic, some of that to be, you know, very specific, right? When you do a town hall event, when you do a company meeting, somebody logs into the video portal, the first thing that they should probably see or have a link to is that, uh, that town hall, that, that very important all company meeting. Right, and search is, is uh, very important as well, right? Search is key to it. Um, and it's important when you start building your library of content, you know, to, to, to create a, you know, create a method or create a paradigm, right, that, uh, that's forward thinking, right? Don't, don't create your metadata tags, don't create your hierarchy of content, only thinking that you're going to have 10 pieces of content. You know, be forward thinking and think about all the different ways people are going to access content, who's creating content, what are the subject types, which departments are going to use it, so that way you can start building, you know, you know search and metadata and hierarchies uh, appropriately. And then the, you know, there's the distribution side, right? Um, right, you're going to want something that's scalable, something that, you know, supports however many people are in your organization. And not only supports how many people are in your organization, right, but supports the number of viewers that you may have in a specific location. And as I mentioned earlier, every, every uh, network is different, right? And some networks support unicast, some support multicast. Ours happens to support unicast, multicast, simulated multicast. You probably want something that's going to support cloud delivery, 
right? You're always going to have users who didn't make it into work. They're remote users or salespeople. Maybe they're consumers. Um, you're going to want something that leverages the cloud to deliver content to those remote users. You're going to want something that maybe leverages your existing enterprise portal. There's a good chance your organization has invested in SharePoint, right, or some other, you know, uh, comprehensive uh, single point of entry portal. It's important to have your video content accessible within those portals as well. I mentioned earlier, you know, supporting multiple device types, supporting something that transcodes and del delivers different uh, video types for the Android users, the iOS users, the Windows users, everybody else, because not every device out there, of course, can, can you know, actually consume the same, uh, same format, right? And they certainly can't necessarily consume the same bit rate, right? You, ha you may have, uh, you know, people with 3G connections because they're rural. You know, they need to be able to, to watch it on their device at a lower bit rate while you have people viewing a, a much nicer experience on your private network. And then maybe the trickiest part about it, right, is getting that video to the remote offices. As I mentioned earlier, it's very simple if you have a multicast enabled wide area network, right? It's, it's, it's fairly straightforward as long as the, the network is configured properly. But that's uh, so rarely the case. Um, and even if you do, right, you may run into issues when people try to consume video on demand content, right? As most of you may or may not know, um, you know, multicast is a, is a live only, is a live only sort of paradigm, right? Delivery paradigm. And uh, we run into customers all the time where they may have a, you know, multicast enabled wide area network. They've got a finite amount of throughput from the home office to remote office. And all of a sudden they do a town hall event and then a bunch of people want to hop on and watch that video on demand asset. And they saturate the bandwidth between where that, that video server is at and the remote facility. Right? And it's actually why we brought to market, we brought to market our, our media gateway product, right? Which is like a, it's a caching server for those remote sites, which just transparently runs. It's very, you know, it's very low maintenance. IT doesn't have to be involved very much. And uh, what that does is it, for, for the live use case, right? It acts as like a stream splitter or a unicast server or, or a multicast, unicast to multicast flipper. And we'll serve up that live, that live content to those local users so they don't have to traverse the network, they don't have to go back out to the cloud. Um, but it also acts as a, as a VOD cache, right? So what happens is, let's say you've got, uh, you know, 100 users in a remote office, the first person who watches that video on demand asset, the media gateway in that office will essentially cache that content, it'll store it locally, so that way users 2 through 100, when they go to access it, they'll just be pulling from that local gateway as opposed to, again, traversing your wide area network and saturating those links from the remote sites to the, the origination site. So that's really, that's our goal, right? It's, uh, it seems like every organization um, these days is, is either doing something like this right now and, and they're, they're using the wrong tool for it. They're using video conferencing when they should be using, you know, streaming or using web conferencing in a certain set of streaming. And so everybody's kind of trying to do it and not doing it very effectively, right? Or they're looking for uh, technologies like this and this is what we're very focused on, on doing at High Vision.